race we looking at, man? Um, at this point, we're going to a staff, mm -hmm. unless there's a late defection from the classic. But um, you know, Peter and I still have to talk this morning. But we talked yesterday a bit, a bit about it. We had a chance to look at um, not only the regular past performances, but all the also the um, the uh, rags and numbers. And um, you know, we're both saying this staff, unless there's some sort of odd late defection, and we don't expect one. But right now, that's what we're doing. How much of a role does Peter play in the whole, you know, uh, analysis of weighing spots with you? Well, he's one of those experienced owners. He's a guy that knows the sport inside and out. He's he's been a top breeder. He's you know bred Grade One winners, and um, he attends the races a lot, especially at Saratoga. He goes every summer. Mm -hmm. So um, he's he's a you know um, his input's important to me, and mm -hmm. you know I think any like any owner that I have that's wanting to be involved in the decision making i encourage it i think that's part of it can you elaborate on the decision why the disc staff versus the classic at this point well i mean um you know like anything it's a next step for her and um we went back and forth over the preakness on w which race was best do we go against straight three-year-olds or do we go take on older horses and in this case um do we go against fillies and mares or do we go against older horses colts as well and so um i think this is a good next step for her and seems ideal and he, he agrees and it's um certainly never black and white and we do think she fits in the classic if you look at it you could make a case that she'd be competitive but um at this stage in her career i think a three-year-old filly against older colts is probably not necessary and if we want to we can do it next year how much are you thinking about year-end awards? I mean, do you think she's done enough to sew up three-year-old Philly champion, no matter what happens? Or you yeah, no, I think. Well, I mean, I would think that she she is three-year-old Philly champion. I'd be surprised if she weren't. But um, and there's horse of the year. Well, look, I mean, as a body of work, I mean, if if a year is a year, <laughs> she's run all year, so she's um, I think deserving to certainly be in the in that category, but. It's up for a higher power than me to decide that. But that's not a, a consideration of where she goes because if you no. win in the classic and won, then she'd be horse of the year. And yeah, but well then no. It depends on who wins probably the classic. You can still make a case she's horse of the year even winning the distaff. So, I mean, she's she's still got to go out there and do it on the racetrack. Yeah, but she still checks the box of having beaten males. Yeah. In a yeah. in a top race. And it might, may very well be in the race of the year that she won. So I don't know. I mean. Like I said, other people decide that stuff, and you know, um, we're just trying to decide one race here that which one's the best spot for. Her. And I think the distaff is a little bit easier spot as far as the depth of the field. It's not as many good horses in there in that race, but it's still no easy race. You're still going to have to work for work for that victory, and you know, we're not assuming anything. Yeah, some of those fillies that uh, might have added some depth to distaff went in this uh, Philly mare sprint. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I know that some of them that are in there, there there's um, some horses, there's a filly coming out of California, it's won four in a row. She is not chopped liver by any means. She very well, um, you know, could run, and she's three-year-old filly herself. Um, but, um, and there's some others in there that are they're coming off big races. I think Todd Fletcher's filly, the one, the Spinster's a very good filly too. So it's, um, and these things aren't easy and I don't expect it to be easy either way, but it's certainly easier than the classic, it looks like, on paper. <laughs> what about facing Monomoy Girl? Uh, you know, here she is, the three-year-old Philly champion of a couple years back. You guys, the likely champion three-year-old Philly of this year? No, it'll make, it, it'll make for a great race. Um, you know, she's obviously a special Philly, and mm -hmm. Brad's done a great job with her, and she's uh, managed to have a really good year coming off a lay long layoff that she had. I'm not sure why, why she had that, but... Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it should be another classic rendition of the distaff, so it's and supposed to be a good race. And today it looked like it was just a really easy kind of work for her. Uh, uh, talk to me about today's drill and, and, for that matter, your other ones that you worked as well. Same thing. You know, she busted out mm -hmm. 12s, mm -hmm. just hit 12s. Rob, Robbie really does have her number right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got her a nice rhythm out there, and he knows how she feels under him mm -hmm. to hit those 12s, and she does it no problem. She galped out in another 12. So um, I think we're you know, well loaded and we've got her right on even keel. Same as she has been the rest of She might look stronger now than she did earlier in the year.
and your two-year-old fillies. I saw some of them heading out to the track, and I, I don't know if I caught every single horse you had out today, but, but I did see them on their way out. Too. Yeah, maintenance five-eighths on, on Crazy Beautiful, and then we've got Simply Ravishing going out here after the break. Mm -hmm. Just talk about how they're doing going in the juvenile fillies and then your two two-year-old colts. Um, but, you know, both both of those have been in a steady routine as well. I mean, this is another maintenance breeze. Um, pretty simple stuff for both the Crazy Beautiful and Simply Ravishing. Um, the Colts is a little bit out of the box. I mean, these are two Colts that both have shown high-level talent. Um, I was really impressed with Camp Hope's win here in the maiden race. Um, King Fury is a horse that seems to want to run, and um, the fact that we're not running Lasix, I decided to bring them back quick. Um, you know, you don't win a championship unless you run for one, and both of these horses act like they're you know, high-level talent. You've made it a career out of uh, being outside the box. You said it's a little outside the box. I think you, you made a career of it. Well, you, you know what? Um, I, th I think we're a little different, and maybe you know, I, my clients. They want to run their horses, and, and I agree. I mean, I, I don't put a lot of emphasis in my win, into my win percentage. I'm more worried about if a horse is doing well. I've never been scared to run one back. Um, we're watching those two real close to make sure that, that the, the turn or the comeback time isn't too much for them. And they're both eating up, and legs are cold. And as long as everything systems go, they'll run.